morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are on the globe. I'm Megena Plon, bringing to you fur by the minute, the fluff, the raw, and sometimes the rough. In this week's fur, a stranded dog's snout and a sausage save the day. Animals traveling to the US may need to show their papers. Lab monkeys get loose on the road. Dog myths are debarked and animals playing in the snow spread joy online. First up, a sausage helps save a hairy dog. This is Megan Aplon, virtually corresponding in French. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous parler d'un effort de sauvetage d'un Jack Russell à l'aide d'une saucisse qui s'est déroulée en Angleterre. Millie, un Jack Russell croisé, s'est perdu lors d'une promenade avec sa maîtresse à Hampshire. Elle s'est échappée de sa laisse et s'est retrouvée seule dans des dangereuses vasières qui bordent la mer. Des bénévoles, y compris de voisins, se sont mis à la recherche de Millie, mais ils n'ont pas pu la retrouver. Ils ont donc décidé d'utiliser l'aide du Denmi Drone Search and Rescue. Ouh Un des bénévoles a eu l'idée géniale de suspendre une saucisse pré-cuite au drone permettant de diriger ce Jack Russell hors du danger boueux, surtout que l'heure de la marée approchait. Millie n'a pas pu résister à l'odeur de la proie volante qui lui a porté secours et elle est maintenant saine et sauve au sein de sa famille. Ah! Bon. Wow! Ah, ça, c'est une histoire. Ça, c'est un drame. Vous imaginez vivre ça avec un chien, une saucisse et un drone? Dans la boue. Ah non, ça serait pas moi, pas Megan. Non, mais hein. <rire> comme ils disent aux États-Unis, c'est vraiment pas une qualité de vie qui m'intéresse du tout. De moi, avec un chien, c'est plutôt marcher sur le trottoir, traverser la rue, probablement marcher sur une pelouse d'un voisin, et peut-être même un parc si j'ai envie. J'imagine pas vraiment que je serais trop à l'aise dans des conditions, disons, boueuses. <rire> non, ça serait pas moi du tout. Next stop, if you're bringing an animal into the US, you may need to have their papers in order, just like for humans. Virtual correspondent straight from Florida, Steve, who happens to be an experienced immigration attorney, joins us. He has some helpful tips to ensure your pet makes it off the plane and into your pad. Steve? So do animals need visas to enter the US? Well, not technically because they aren't humans. But in practice, yes, in their own furry or hairy way. Their version of a passport is proof of a rabies vaccination. Your fur baby must be healthy and have a valid rabies vaccine certificate signed by a licensed veterinarian. This should include the parent's name and address, the canine's age, breed, sex, and color, and other info on the vaccine and the veterinarian. Sound familiar? There is currently a temporary suspension for dogs from the CDC's list of high-risk countries for rabies. Dogs older than six months with valid US-issued rabies vaccination certificates and proof of microchip are exempt. The CDC doesn't require rabies certificates for cats. They do need to appear healthy, but some states require vaccination of cats, so you should check with local authorities, so it's federal and it's local. Quarantine for pets is not required by most US states and territories. Pets excluded from entry will be sent back to their country of origin, so make sure you have your papers squared away. The CDC does not regulate other animals like horses, fish, or lizards. Be sure to check with other animal and government agencies about requirements. And for those orangutan lovers, unfortunately, no monkeys are allowed in as pets. Well, thank you, Steve. Wow, I never expected animals to have the same sort of immigration issues <laughs> that I've had in the past. Next up, monkeys are on the loose in Pennsylvania after a highway collision. Virtual correspondent straight from the Florida Keys, Mariah has the story on these primates on the lamb. Mariah? Thanks, McGann. This is a rough one. Four macaques escaped their trailer after it hit a dump truck. They were part of a group of Lab 100 primates en route to an unnamed quarantine facility. Their chauffeur was cutting in front of the big rig when it happened near Interstate 80 in Danville. Michelle Fallon was driving behind the truck and stopped to help with the fallen crates. She has developed a cough, runny nose, and a pink eye-like reaction in one eye. Officials urged her to take precautions. She received her first dose of a rabies vaccine and was prescribed antiviral medication. 
Unfortunately, the three loose monkeys were captured and euthanized. Animal rights group PETA has criticized the handling of the incident, including the risk to humans and euthanizing the monkeys without an explanation. Those poor monkeys. Back to you, McGann. Thank you, Mariah. I can't imagine it. The person that had to be in contact with the monkeys and, and finding out that they've been euthanized. It's a sad, sad tale. Next up, you may be familiar with some commonly shared dog myths and wonder, are they really true? The American Kennel Club is barking on the topic. One myth the group say isn't true is the one about dogs hating mail delivery people. It's not personal. Well, I'm glad to hear that. They are protecting the home and believe they are effective because the human approaches the house and then leaves quickly each time. That makes so much sense. Like if I was a dog and I saw the mail person come in and then I saw them leave real quick, I'm like, I'm doing a bloody good job. Wow. Another law is dogs show love with their quote unquote puppy eyes. This one is apparently true. They hold a gaze with their caregivers to show fondness and trust. They are effectively manipulating us with their puppy cute eyes, aren't they? And dogs and cats are not natural enemies. Wow. So they can coexist quite peacefully, particularly if introduced early in life. Well, that's nice to know. Next up, animals frolicking in the snow in Ohio are melting people's hearts. The Akron Zoo posted its version of an adorable snow day. Some animals were finally able to play in the snow after a big storm hit the area. The recreational activities included Sweet River otters, Molly and Stratton, wiggling their way into some fun. Red Panda Sisters Coco, Lulu and Penny and Grizzly Bears Jackson and Cheyenne enjoyed some rolling and wrestling. Look how cute they are, oh my God. The keepers even brought snow indoors for the lemurs to enjoy. My, 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 they are adorable. They're enjoying the snow. Oh, and that's a wrap for us this morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are on the globe. I'm Miguel Eplon. Be sure to sniff out the latest headlines you need to know from the Podemic Network, brought to you by The Motley Crew. And if you have feedback or story suggestions, please leave a comment and be sure to subscribe and like at The Motley Crew channel on YouTube for fur and other possum entertainment. walking no damn dog you know damn bloody mud flats whatever not doing it no mom as they say i'm a flat person yeah i leave my flat i walk out walk the dog on concrete sidewalk perhaps every now and again the dog encounters what a little grass here and there perhaps maybe even in a park Ooh, exciting but that's as far as I'm going to go. You're not going to find me in a forest. You're not, not walking in the mud. I think we lost a mic at first up, but um, yeah, maybe you do one more. If you can keep your arm down. Yes, yeah, so I can keep my arm down. Thank you. I'll try. And dogs and cats are not natural enemies. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like that we should say where they're from and not just show it. That's a good idea. Thank you. I do come up with a few good ones myself. I'm not just a pretty face, you know. They say the snow brings out the child in us, right? Looks like it brings out the animals in animals. 